Welcome back to JoeSchaeferFlyFishing.com. I'm Joe Schaefer. Today I'm going to show you how to tie in my series of Schaefer flies here, the Schaefer Scud. A little bit different uh, tying technique with this one, a little bit different materials, uh, a lot of different things going on with this scud than you've probably seen before. Um, I typically like tying this on a hook size that is a Dairiki 305 which is a real good hook for this or a 100 SPBL in the TMC, uh, TMC hooks um, but any down eye straight hook is good. The reason why I tie my scuds on straight hooks is if you've ever seen scuds when they move around or they're swimming um, I've actually held them in my hand and watched them. They are flat. They are not curved. Uh, a lot of times uh, they'll curl up and stuff like that when they're uh, trying to push themselves or move, things like that. But most of the time they're kind of hanging out flat and they give a good profile. Um, this is also kind of a crossover bug the way I tie this a little bit. It's uh, very flat and very sparsely tied. I do that for a reason because I don't want... Uh, I want it to be able to cross over as also a sow bug pattern and the way that I tie it a lot of times uh, they can cross over. I've actually seen fish um, that were feeding on sow bugs in uh, rock gardens and stuff like that uh, upon checking out a scene and uh, fish this underneath it and it worked well, real well for that as well. So a couple different applications for this. So. Um, let's get started here. Uh, the tying thread is a UTC clear mono uh, 0.004. That's what I'll typically use as a mono thread for these crustaceans. I like using uh, clear threads um, just so let those underlying colors and give them a little opaqueness like the naturals. We'll start out with when you're tying with this mono thread, you got to do some wraps. And we're going to do a couple wraps and then we're going to come behind the tag in that I'm holding up and do a couple wraps there to kind of lock it in. And then I'll do a little jam knot over the top of that. Reason being is if I just tied that on like normal thread, a lot of times that would slip out. So you kind of got to jam behind your tag in to make sure it stays on there. First thing that we're going to tie in with this is just a piece of mono line. Um, here this is a 10 pound test. Uh, you can use 3x, 2x material, whatever you think. I tend to go a little bit bigger because we're going to use this for the rib. It uh, makes for a real defined rib on this fly. Plus it gives the body a little bit more flatness as it sticks out as long as you tie it in right along the side of the hook there. So that's the first thing we'll tie in. The next thing we're going to tie in is some thin skin. This is the spotted thin skin in olive color. Uh, we're going to be tying this in the olive version so that's how I'm going to tie it in. And I cut it to about a strip that's just as big if not a little bit smaller than the gap of the hook there. That way um, that's a good frame to um, kind of check out there and see how wide you need it. Um, make sure when you tie this in that you got the shiny side down. There's a dull side and there's a shiny side as you can see there. We want to tie the shiny side down because when we flip it over to pull it over the top of the fly that shiny side will be up and showing. So we're just going to tie that in, lock it down. I don't want to pull on this one. Um, I just want to cover, uh, make sure that's tied in real good with connecting wraps. This one you don't have to be real specific. I'm not going to go down the bend on this one. I'm going to go just to the bend. Give it a couple wraps there. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And then we're ready to start with the dubbing. Come back to the back here. Now the first dubbing I use is a South Scud dubbing in Smoky Olive. That's my favorite color for the olive uh, scuds. I'll use this smoky olive color. It's kind of got a bunch of different fire fibers blended into it. Real good stuff. I'm going to pull out a little bit of this. Um, I want a little bit excess. Not a ton. 
but I want to make sure that I can bind it down and cover those wraps. See how we're not using colored thread, we're going to use the natural color of this dubbing to shine through those thread wraps. So you want to make sure you have a decent amount, but not too much to where it bulks up on you. So we're going to attach that. We're going to wrap that South Scud dubbing forward, just covering the hook a little bit to about the three quarters point, and we're going to stop there. Okay, next up. Now I've tried different dubbings for this hot spot and I ended up mixing my own. So here's what we have here. It's a little bit of a different blended color. And what I do is put half UV hot orange in, uh, ice dub, and then I use a South Scud dub big horn orange. Put it in the uh, dubbing mixer, also known as a coffee grinder, and I'll Mix that up, just even parts, mix it up, and we get this real good looking dubbing. And it's real easy to work with. And all I need is a little bit. I'm just going to put in a little tiny hot spot in this fly. Just enough to make it look like a molting scud a little bit. Make it more attractive to fish because they see thousands of these things, especially in our waterways here in Colorado. So we just want to set it out apart from the other scuds a little bit. I'm going to dub that on and then I'm just going to put a little hot spot collar in there. Nothing real big, just enough to make it look good there. So there's where I'll add my hot spot. Then I'll come back in with that south scud dubbing again. Put a little bit more on, twist up a little dubbing here. And we'll complete the dubbing portion of this fly. Just want enough to finish out this fly, not too much. We don't want to build at the head too much here. Just enough. I typically, if you can see here, I'll start a little bit smaller at the back and move to a little bit bulkier at the front. If you see the naturals, they're a little bit towards their head where their eyes are at, a little bit bulkier than the back end. So that's kind of the taper that you see here. All right, so. Now we're going to pull that thin skin right over the top and we're going to kind of pull. I don't want to pull too hard though where I pull that um, thin skin out of whack with those dots. Just want to pull a little bit and then I'm going to secure it down with several turns here on this thread. The nice thing about using this mono thread tying thread is that uh, it really holds well once you got stuff in there. So I'm going to lock it down a little bit and I'm going to lift up and cut that excess off. Okay. Then I'm going to grab my uh, little piece of tippet here or whatever material you want to use and I'm going to palmer that forward making a nice rib. You can see the profile of this fly already starting to work out. What I'll do is if you have any hair sticking up that you're catching, just kind of push them down and out to the side. And then I'm going to come to the front here and tie off that thread and that tippet material. Good couple turns here. I don't want a bunch of bulk at the head here as much as possible. And then I'm going to clip off that tippet material. Okay. So here, from here, we're going to whip finish. All right. We're going to whip finish us ahead here. And again, I like to do this a couple times just for security. With this fly, you don't really need it because we're going to actually epoxy it. But um, it's always good to have a few extra turns there so nothing comes out. Then I'm going to clip off that excess. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple eyes in here right at the head. So all I'm going to do is put a dot on the one side and then a dot on the other right over those thread wraps. And that just mimics the eyes on a scud or a sow bug. And then I'm going to come in here to the bottom and I'm going to use my little dubbing brush here. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to pull those fibers out from underneath that tippet material. And you can turn that over there. Just kind of brush that out. 
see what I'm doing here and that just gets the little legs formed on the bottom there pull them to the bottom now if I have anything over a hook shank or this hook gap long I just cut it down there a little bit that way it just cleans it up a little bit so there's the Schaefer scud um, and how we tie it now one thing I do do is go back in here and I'll get a little bit of uh, epoxy and I'll make sure that um, I have a little coating on top this makes this fly real durable and it also just kind of makes it real buggy scud looking with the way that um, it looks and I'll come in here with just a little bead of UV clear fly finish from Loon and I'll just bring it down the back here real flat I don't want a tongue and a bulk on here I just want it real flat okay just like that cover all my wraps make sure I'm not missing anything there make sure I'm not covering the eyelet mainly then I'm going to come in with my UV light hit it with that UV light and that will complete the fly so you see that it puts a nice little coating on top there makes it look like a crustacean real good shell back there um, lots of good stuff going on with this Schaefer Scud real easy to tie real easy to um, fish you can fish this in any still waters any uh, rivers or streams that have scuds in them and uh, application for this fly usually nymphine or I'll even run these in bigger sizes from size 14 down to size 20 um, and I'll even run the bigger sizes behind streamers and uh, get a lot of takes on those so just a little something there to um, add to this fly and how to fish them hope you enjoyed my series Schaefer flies and the Schaefer scud here stay tuned for our next fly thanks again take care